So, yeah. Good morning once again. So, uh, this morning we had wonderful time so far. Uh, God would lead us uh, rest of the service. Today we'll look at uh, the the aspects of uh, the learning and the wisdom part of our lives, how we have to live in this world. So machine learning and IoT considered as industrial revolution 4.0, which means it is a very uh, remarkable in the, uh, in the science and technology. Uh, if you can see the other three uh, revolutions took place 18th century, 19th century two, and uh, 20th century, this is one. So machine learning is basically is teaching a machine to learn as to what to do, how to identify, or how to move robotics has become such a major thing. So this is all possible because machines are learning. So learning is very key there. If you have a big data, so that, that's what uh, the advantage of that machine can learn and do things as people are doing. And, and uh, I also have a kind of uh, taste of it. So I'm, I'm testing a board, which is like my finger, uh, length of my finger and the size of my finger. So it can identify my voice. I um, mean, a few keywords, if I speak, it can recognize and respond. So that is the power that we are in. So learning is such a powerful thing. Okay, we human beings learn a lot of things to identify. From our childhood, we would be learning to identify things and words. That's how, that's how we will learn language. Then value system, etiquette to live uh, life comfortable in the society. So uh, we'll also learn or a period of time, that's how we will pick up the language and uh, other things also. And uh, Art of Living, Ravi Shankar is called Gurudev, Guru of Joy because of his teachings and many people follow him. It's again, it's a human effort through meditation, yoga and all that he would teach people. And there are so many people who are following him, millions. Right, but uh, many so-called great people, philosophers and thinkers gave us uh, various uh, good ways of living through uh, uh, keeping them in uh, a few words like proverbs to uh, impart wisdom from their experience or observation. It's again human wisdom. So it's uh, when we are living in this world, we, we as believers, we are to live with much more wisdom, with much more understanding. Right, so J.F. Packer in his classic book, he said, uh, in his classic book, Knowing God, he said, we should know God to know how to live in the world he has created. So he created us, he created the world. So in the world, when we are living, we have to have that uh, knowledge of God or we should get that blueprint or the understanding from God in order to lead a life uh, as to how to live in this world. Okay, uh, so um, let us keep uh, uh, the things in mind like uh, Pilgrim's Progress. Uh, the, the Pilgrim's uh, journey was uh, described in that uh, book or the movie that uh, we will know how he goes through various stages. So our lives also as believers, we are called sojourners in this world to continue and walk in the footsteps of our Lord Jesus Christ. And... Uh, we would be progressing. So that is a journey that we are on. So we need direction. We need uh, training in order to go through that. Okay, we, we can understand what all the different things Pilgrim went through uh, in, the, in that book and the movie. Uh, most of you must have seen. So today we will look at the, uh, the uh, Proverbs that is given to us in, the, in our Bibles. Uh, we will um, look at some chapters, beginning chapters of Proverbs. So Proverbs talks mostly about the wisdom. So 128 times it's spoken about wisdom. And uh, the Hebrew word that is kokma, K-H-O-K-M-A-H, -K kokma is the skill in art of godly living. 
So uh, today I would like to uh, name uh, our uh, sermon is like Art of Godly Living. Art of Godly Living. So uh, Proverbs is, talks about so many uh, things in life, day-to-day -day life that uh, uh, we will come across, like relationships, like uh, how to uh, bring up children, how to control our, uh, how to deal with uh, uh, various uh, relationships or uh, how to deal with wealth, how to acquire it, how to manage it, how to spend it and all that. So, so many things that it covers, but today we would, uh, we would be uh, concentrating mostly about the wisdom, wisdom part of it, right? So, uh, uh, by the way, Proverbs is a, uh, is a, a generalized, the truths that are there, they are not promises. Right, it is 99%, they are done like that. 99 cases, that is true. That is not 100%, right? So they are not promises. Okay, why Proverbs? Why uh, Solomon? Uh, I mean, uh, we know the author is Solomon uh, for the book of uh, Proverbs, mostly is Solomon. Uh, so uh, when he chooses this method of writing, his wisdom is because they are very brief, was rather he wrote uh, some time back. So uh, he chose this method because they are very brief and people can easily memorize. You uh, imagine in the Old Testament times where uh, the Bible was not available to everybody. So they have to memorize most of the people. So uh, they put it in a very nutshell, right? So beautiful, we, uh, we know some of the thick, some of the Proverbs that we use day in and day out, which would communicate many things, many, a uh, lot of description in a short sentence, right? So uh, that's how uh, the, uh, the, uh, the author put uh, his uh, God's wisdom or God-given wisdom in the, in the Proverbs. So uh, 1 Timothy 4.8 says godliness. Uh, there are various trainings, I mean, physical training, but Godliness is of value in every way, 1 Timothy 4.8. So Proverbs are God's will and very much practical in nature. So Proverbs we can consider as the uh, will of God that is written in that way. So we don't have any doubt about that. So it is the God's will that is so practical in nature. God's will is not uh, something abstract, or even the Proverbs for that matter, or the wisdom is not an abstract idea, but they are actually a practical things that we can really get into. God's will applies to every aspect of his people's lives. A proper relation to God is first understanding his truth, embracing and obeying. So knowing God or having right relationship with God is understanding his truth and then embracing and obeying. Okay, so uh, that is the uh, crux of Christian living. So if he, if he say we know God, then these are the aspects we need to have in our lives. In a way, actually this morning, worship and table served as introduction to this you know, sermon, like uh, the worship message. It is about the salvation and the table message is about the fear of God. Uh, in Proverbs, we know that fear of the Lord is the beginning of the wisdom, beginning of wisdom. So uh, that's where it starts. It, having right relationship with God is the only way that we can have godly wisdom. There are many other wisdoms that we can think about, but the best or the uh, only possible that the wisdom is from God, having right relationship with God. <clears throat> so in uh, 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 brief passages we will look at. Uh, so uh, if, we, if we start from the beginning, uh, Proverbs is uh, 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 started with, what is the purpose of the Proverbs that is given, is given in the Bible, is to impart wisdom. If you can see the first chapter, second verse, it says, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding. 
to receive the instruction of wisdom. And uh, fifth verse, it says, a wise man will hear and increase learning. And a man of understanding will attain wise counsel. So even if some people are wise or to some extent they are learned in various ways, still Proverbs would teach us much more deeper into their lives. So uh, if you can say that uh, to, to lead a life, happy life, a life lived by God is happy life. That is third chapter, 21 to 26, it is mentioned. And a life lived by God is useful life. That is third chapter, 27 to 28. By the way, these uh, uh, there are many topics that uh, or themes that we spoken about. They'll be repeating. Okay, I'm mentioning few of the passages, but there are many other places it is there. Okay, so it is a treasure that God has given that by which we can live a happy life, a God-pleasing life that we can lead. Uh, okay, so a life lived by God's will is not just happen. So uh, the uh, we have spoken just now that Proverbs is like God's will. They are, they are given as commandments, they are given as instructions, uh, and various words that are used, I will, I will explain them. Uh, uh, he'll say wisdom, he'll say um, an insight, he'll say uh, various kinds of the words uh, he will use. And so understanding, all these things we will explain a little later. But now uh, we see that uh, a life lived by God's will is not just happen. We have to seek after it, we have to study it, pursue it, discipline oneself. So discipline is something that very much attached to the uh, having wisdom or living by wisdom. So it is, uh, it is the discipline that is the very central. That's why we are called disciples. So that is very much built into it. So uh, if you see that um, uh, recently I watched a video which says winners need discipline than motivation how right it was, I thought, because motivation can go, can take us for a day or two. For example, when we are so motivated, we will start exercising our body or reading Bible or whatever. But when uh, this soon after that motivation is gone or that, uh, that fades away slowly, unless that is really uh, gets into our system, unless we really discipline ourselves to uh, really have that. For example, uh, recently uh, when Olympics concluded, we know that uh, Sindhu and uh, Neeraj Chopra, Neeraj Chopra is gold medalist. And uh, uh, when we see them on podium, we will appreciate them and uh, uh, we'll be encouraged even, uh, even our children or ourselves uh, can do something like that. But many times we tend to forget that how much practice they put behind that. For Sindhu, I think uh, sometime back I heard because um, her neighbor was a uh, Christian, uh, Christian brother was, um, I think Ruben, his name. So he was explaining that uh, she was not touching her cell phone for six months in order to practice uh, for the uh, upcoming tournament. I think that was not Olympics that time, something else. For Olympics, she must have completely left uh, her cell phone or whatever, uh, her personal life in order to concentrate, in order to uh, achieve some goal. Uh, so, and uh, more, more important thing is that they go through so much of rigorous training under a coach. So they will have a personal coach. So this is very important for us to understand that we also as believers, we have coach, the Holy Spirit God, God's word is our coach to really train us in godliness. So how, how much we have to, Hebrew 12 one says, let us run with endurance, the race that is set before us. It is a lifelong marathon race. It is not just 100 meters dash or uh, for short time like uh, Olympics or something. They, they must have uh, give up after some time because they, they, it, was the, it is their career. 
So maybe after uh, two Olympics, three Olympics, they'll give up. But for us, it is throughout the life we would be running and how much discipline we should be in order to uh, really train ourselves in the ways of God and godliness. But is it any uh, boring or is it any uh, too difficult to do it? Actually, our Lord is with us and the Holy Spirit God who guides us. And we will have more and more joy because we will see the benefits of the wisdom that we will see uh, following the wisdom uh, later on. But when we experience that, we will be encouraged even more because God is the, the most friendly, the, uh, the good person in the world where we can, or in our life, where we can have him and have his fellowship all through. So, uh, uh, so, th uh, so that is only motivates us and makes us much more um, focused uh, in our lives. Uh, so, uh, as earlier uh, seen that, uh, and by the way, Proverbs is about commands, teaching, which requires you to accept, obey with open heart. My son, it would be addressing most of the time, my son, my son, my son, many times. So it's only uh, sounds that uh, like we have to receive, we have to accept. That needs humility, that needs learning attitude, open mind, okay? There are people, different categories we will look at later, how people have rejected because they don't have that learning attitude, they don't have that interest. Right In the chapter 1, verse 7, it says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So there are some people who would just outrightly reject it. We'll continue. So in, in learning or in openness, there are three things that we need to do. Uh, I think most of us know that we have to unlearn because uh, from childhood, we must have learned some, some things the way that we do. May not be confirming with word of God. May not be pleasing to God. So this is the big problem because when, when you know already something, you would, you would tend to do the same way. You don't want to unlearn, undo, undo it again or learn new. Right? That is very difficult for even at my age, I think I should do it, or even later age, we have to do it because learning right ways, that is very important to really continue in communion with God. Because it is not just uh, something that uh, you learn for living or learn for anything, but it is, uh, it is for eternity we are getting into. And how much important for us and how much important for us because the value is so too much to lose it or too much to, um, I mean, neglect it. Okay, we have to unlearn certain things and we have to learn godliness according to God's word. This is very important. We, we must have learned in some ways, but that may not be sufficient. That may not be confirming to God's word and relearn whatever we have learned, learn it again so that it will really stick to it. It will not go away. You are doing it time and again so that our nature, our very uh, habits or our culture or the way we speak or the way we behave, that will change completely forever. Okay, may God give us such a grace to all of us. That So uh, these three are important. Unless we are open, unlearn, even open up to unlearn whatever we know and learn and relearn, then only we can really learn things. And that is what even uh, the machines now, as they're learning, they were, they'll teach us that if some model doesn't work, they have to retrain again. So that is the thing that we may also learn as persons that if something is not working, 
if something desired result is not coming out from that situation, then we have to really think how we have to handle it in a different way, how we have to change. Most of the time we would be thinking that other person should change. That is the problem in most of the families with wife and husband or with children. Okay, as a parent, I always want my children to change, but not changing myself. That is never going to improve a situation. I have to change in order my children to change. So these are the, uh, these are the things that we have to continue to work and uh, change ourselves so that we will get the desired result, desired output that we are, our lives may be pleasing to God, right? There are many ways uh, Proverbs teaches the wisdom that is needed for our living, day-to-day -day life. Okay, Proverbs 1 to 9 chapters dedicated are mostly talking about wisdom and folly without wisdom. So uh, definitely what uh, the, uh, the Proverbs suggests is what is to be desired the most? Wisdom, we look at that is there in the third chapter. Okay, so uh, we will uh, get into the what is wisdom? So uh, chapter nine, verse 10, it says, uh, repeats again, one seven also it said, that fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, knowledge of the Holy One is in sight. So fear of the Lord, Again, in the table, we have seen that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That's where it starts. And we have to grow. Knowing God is beginning of wisdom, which means know more of God. You have more wisdom to lead peaceful and happy life. Uh, I'm not uh, excluding all the difficulties, but even through the difficulties, we can enjoy the peace of God. We can enjoy the leading of God when we have this wisdom. Uh, we were, when we are not foolish, right? So exhibiting God's character in many practical affairs of life. So we have that privilege of really walking in the steps of our Lord Jesus Christ when we really follow the, how he lived in this world. Okay, as, we, as uh, always, uh, it's um, uh, at least three years he lived and his life is uh, recorded in the gospels. That is for our benefit. It is not just to appreciate, not just to, um, uh, not just to uh, be um, as a, um, what is that, fans or favorite. Uh, I mean, we, uh, we uh, really uh, admire, but it is to live. It is to really exercise in ourselves how he lived. So as a model, he lived uh, in this world. Okay, so now I, I'll try to explain the, uh, uh, the other, other things like instruction, understanding, prudence, knowledge, discretion, learning, and counsel. There are many words that are used. Really, I feel that it's a treasure of wisdom, a treasure of words that the various ways it is explained so that we can understand better. So instruction is the, uh, in that it is idea of discipline is, built in when the instruction is given to discipline us or understanding. Understanding is ability to grasp a truth with insight and discernment that, that most of us know. And the prudence, kind of intelligence that sees uh, intelligence that sees the reasons behind things. That is the prudence. And knowledge, skill and ability to do things. And discretion ability to devise wise plans after understanding a matter. Okay, we, uh, we need to have discretion to make plans when we understand a matter. Learning, to lay hold of, to acquire, this also we know. Counsel, wise guidance that moves one's life in the right direction. So all these things are mentioned in Proverbs that is for our benefit. Okay, various ways it would teach us the wisdom in order to lead a life that is pleasing to God. Many people think wisdom is something to do with thinking or ability to make decisions. 
but actually it is the fellowship with wisdom. Actually, wisdom is calling us to be with the verse, uh, uh, chapter one, verse 24. Because I have called you, you refused. I have stretched out my hand and no one regarded. So uh, it is not just an abstract idea. It is about having fellowship or living with uh, wisdom. That means it is a practical way of living. So that is what is encouraged. It is not about some uh, abstract ideas. Now we will look at benefits of wisdom that uh, chapter three verses 16 to 18. 13 to 18, happy is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding. For her proceeds are better than the profits of silver and her gain than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies and all the things you may desire cannot compare with her. Length of days is in her right hand and in her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her paths of peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her and happy are all who retain her. So there are many benefits. If we can go through that list, I think time won't be sufficient. I'm just, um, I'm just um, trying to give an overview. Okay, we are not getting into details of it, but these are the benefits. If you have wisdom, you have long life, you have riches and honor, all of the things. Just like I think we have seen in the life of Solomon, how he asked for wisdom and God has added all of the things. So this is the simple thing, but what world says, it is completely opposite. Okay, you, you gain money and you will get all of the things. That's what people are after. You gain name or fame, or you gain, you make, uh, I mean, uh, career, all that. It's, it's not true. I mean, that's what we, we will see later on in chapter eight and nine, and chapter nine, you look at how the comparison is given. But here we see that the, the most important thing is gaining wisdom. So uh, when, we, when we gain wisdom, all other things are added to us, long life. And 17th verse, it says, her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her paths of peace. This is how God, Prince of Peace, or God, when he's promising us peace, we need to really learn how to live. It is not just praying about, Lord, give us peace, give us peace, or make things pleasant. How that is possible? Through this way. When you really desire, when we really pray for wisdom and living according to it, then we will have peace. Then you want to have good name or long life or riches, this is the way God's word says. When I first realized, I thought, so what is the most important thing? It is wisdom, nothing else. That is what I should desire for. Understanding, prudence, knowledge, in various ways. What else should I desire for besides that? Let's go on. And uh, verses 21 to 26 also. Does God, my son, let them not depart from your eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. So there will be life to your soul and grace to your neck. Then you will walk safely in your way and your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. Yes, you will lie down and your sleep will be sweet. Do not be afraid of sudden terror, nor of trouble from the wicked when it comes. For the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being caught. Do you see the relation between wisdom and really depending on God? They are very much interrelated. That's why 26 uh, verse it says, God comes into picture. For the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being caught. 
it is god's will wisdom following wisdom or seeking wisdom is seeking god's will doing the way god want uh, living the way god wants us to live and god would protect us add us add to us everything that is needed in our life right in the uh, chapter 8 verse 6 it says it will give noble things listen for i will speak of excellent things and from the opening of my lips will come right things so wisdom and uh, truthfulness or the light or the enlightenment everything is related there is no darkness or there is no um uh, as we call in our world the cleverness it is not cleverness we are talking about it is wisdom it is pure it is truth it is no no falsehood that is mingled with it okay so uh, and um, again what is right and the eight, uh, eight seven it says what is truth for my mouth will speak truth wickedness is an abomination to my lips that's what is promised there is no no wickedness or no evil in the in the ways of god or his will uh eight also it says eight eight all the words of my mouth are with righteousness nothing crooked or perverse perverse in them so there is no crookedness at all with godliness that's why if if at all we have anything wicked things or evil things or god is showing something that is not right with god's word we have to immediately do away with it maybe uh, that is our family culture maybe the culture of the world around maybe you are coming from christian family you have some kind of culture which is not conforming with the word you have to immediately undo it there is no other option you cannot keep on doing it or the dominance in the family generally in the society men are dominant figure but that is not what god's word says right so whatever that is contradicting or not right with god's word we have to immediately get rid of that we have to sit in the presence of god to correct ourselves we need grace in these areas so when we fear god that's what we have seen we have to tremble before him we cannot take things light and we cannot continue our lives like that if something bad is happening in our personal lives we need to really tremble before god and run to him again and uh, other uh, in new testament another book that is mentioned about proverbs is james epistle of james which is talking again about the wisdom the godly wisdom and worldly wisdom um so there also there are um wonderful things like honorable life the wisdom promises doing good things with humility that is mentioned there and we will have counsel and rebuke proverbs 127 125 we have that uh, it will rebuke us and counsel in the right ways rebuke is not doing wrong and counsel us to continue in the right ways so all these are the benefits all these are the things that we can learn if only we have heart of learning if uh, uh, we are all believers and believing in god and if our lives are not right for some reason our relations are not right and we have to really open to learn it is not that many times we don't know the things we know but we cannot do because we don't have the discipline because we don't we, we don't want to listen sometimes we are adamant how many other times you are being warned you are still continuing the same so we need to be really careful about it 
chapter 8, 18 and 19 says uh, that uh, what wisdom has to offer, 18 and 19. Riches and honor are with me, enduring riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, yes, than fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. So all these things, so what wisdom can give, even a richest person in the world can, cannot buy with all that he has. So it gives us durable riches, like fear of the Lord. That is the fear of the Lord is the best thing as we have seen, when we run to him, he would take care of everything. And humility, godly speech, wise counsel, understanding, guidance in life's paths, strength for the journey. He, he is the one who enables us to continue our marathon, to run in our race, to continue in our race. It is nobody else. Right, let us turn to chapter nine, where it talks about um, wisdom is calling and also folly is calling to the people. Contrast is beautiful here because both are almost similar way calling, at least calling party same. The wisdom has built her house, chapter nine, verse one onwards. She has hewn out her seven pillars and she has slaughtered her meat. She prepared the table. That's what we see in the second verse. And this time she sent out her maidens, beautiful maidens to call people. Third verse, she cries out from the highest places of the city. Whoever is simple, let him turn in here. Ask for him who lacks understanding, she says to him. Come eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Forsake foolishness and live and go in, in the way of understanding. We may be foolish in our lives, but we cannot continue like that. When you know something is not right, we have to really correct. I think this passage is a parallel to the Isaiah 55, one to two. There also the Lord invites that come to me, buy bread and wine without money, it is free. Here also wisdom is inviting people. You need not pay anything. You just have to come and enjoy. What a blessedness. Many times we tend to Forget about it. Many times we, we worry about all of the things, leaving wisdom. Okay, God has given such a treasure to all of us. At times I feel when I'm doing some exercise, it's very hard, right? Every day when you do exercise or uh, running, it is hard. We want to give up. We don't want to continue is uh, doing some half an hour or one hour, whatever the walking or whatever you do, it is hard. It is not easy. I do some, uh, some kind of uh, calorie burning exercises. They are hard. It is very difficult. At times I think that had God asked us to worship him like that or pray to him like that, I don't know how long people would have prayed. I think we should get encouraged from the Hindu friends, how staunchly they do, they do various things, right? Getting up early in the morning, especially Swami Ayappa and all. Those people get up very early in the morning and take bath in cold water in uh, deep winter. It's a how how uh, they discipline so much. They don't eat so many things. They don't even live with their wives because they don't want to defile that way and whatever reason. So they, they dedicate their life like that, maybe for a short time. But definitely we know that after 
completing 40 days whatever the my friend i i know a friend so he wants to quit with smoking so many times he does it in that time but after that he uh, that comes back we know that emptiness right so when we know all these are promised or this is the way we have to live or make our life not just living this is how we have to live then are we careful enough to do that are we really taking interest at least like a physical exercise are we taking that pains or that discipline we have otherwise how can we expect any discipline in our lives or any change in our lives any transformation in our lives it is something to desire but something else is coming out right because of we are, we are not disciplining ourselves that is a problem that we can see okay here the other one is calling uh verses 13 onwards a foolish woman is clamorous she is simple and knows nothing but she said sits at the door of her house on a seat by the highest place of the city to call those pass by who go straight on their way whoever is simple let him turn in here as for him who lacks understanding she says to him stolen water is sweet and bread eaten in secret is pleasant see she she did not prepare anything that is the wisdom of this world she did not prepare anything she did not do anything rather she is telling that stolen water is sweet how many times you are listening to this kind of wisdom we enjoy in uh, uh, we enjoy in the explicit uh, images of women or the pornography all these things they are nothing but this kind of philosophy okay so uh, we will go a little fast i think um, uh, yeah time is um, almost running out i'm late already okay so uh, like i get a picture of many things weighing down a person you have to get rid of yourself through discipline and godly living may i repeat again i get uh, so it's like many things are on our, on us are weighing down on uh, on us and we have to really get rid of them somebody is uh, putting strong shoulders on me i i am weighing down i have to really get rid of those hands by our own discipline and godly living okay oh, get the charger quickly get it back okay so uh, because uh, the same uh, analogy if we take that promised land was promised to israel but they still have to fight and defeat the enemy right so this is our choice again okay finally how to gain wisdom chapter 1 verse 20 it says by listening by responding to the call choosing verse 23 and the second chapter verses 1 to 1 to 6 it says beautiful description i think uh, when i when i read that i was thoroughly understood that the, the, this is the most important thing that we have to pursue in life my son if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding Yes, if you cry out to discernment and lift up your voice for understanding, if you seek her as silver, and uh, one moment, please. Is it counting? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If if you cry out for discernment or if uh, lift up your voice for understanding, if you seek her as silver. search for as for hidden treasures then you will understand the fear of the lord and find the knowledge of god for the lord gives 
gives wisdom and from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. So God is the one who gives us. I think I'll make it short. So it is, it is from the Lord that is, uh, that is there already. So uh, we need to just pursue it. Just uh, with wholehearted, heartedly we should seek that. Holy Spirit God also called the spirit of wisdom will teach the serious, not the curious. Right? Uh, whoever are serious, they would learn the ways of God. On the other hand, many people are rejecting the wisdom that is we see from verses 24 to 32 uh, in the first chapter, that there are three kinds of people, simple, scornful, and fools. May, may we not fall into these kind of categories because it's, uh, um, it is not of, well, for the believers. Okay, we should really fear the Lord. Okay, so yeah, in closing, let's all just understand, do you think that the Lord Jesus Christ has the wisdom? Yes, of course, he is the embodiment of wisdom, right? He lived with wisdom and all other apostles and all the believers. Then why not we? Shall we all desire that such a living that uh, living with wisdom is living in transformation. Shall we all close our, uh, close our eyes? Just look, uh, look to the Lord, that God may give us this kind of grace and desire that we, we may live in the fear of the Lord. May I request uh, Matthew Anna to pray and close this meeting. Sorry, I'm late. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word that reminds us to seek your wisdom, the wisdom that comes from you, which may appear many times as foolishness in the world, but that is the real wisdom. It starts by fearing God, fearing you. May we desire this wisdom, wisdom may we fear you, may we revere you live for you. Maybe not. We thank you for your word and we pray, dear Lord, that we will not just be listeners of your word, doers of your word. Each one of us. Thank you, Lord, and Lord Jesus, most precious name we pray. Amen. Now to him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy to the only God our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Please meet one another before we leave.